Alaska bush pilot. Oh my gosh, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Hey! Hi! Hi. Listen to anything that I've said. Oh, hello and welcome to this episode of Cockpits and Cocktails. Tonight we have an extra special guest, but you have your hosts, Fly Alyssa and Fly Girl Kelly. Yes, and tonight we have Danica Baldwin with us, Miss Girl in Alaska. How are you, girl? Hey, it's doing good. It's cold today. It's snowing. Oh yeah. my, is it? What is yeah. the temperature up in Alaska right now? Um, today's a little bit warmer. I didn't look at the temperature, but the other day it was like negative 16. It was negative 10. Wow. And had this really big stretch of sun, sunshine, so it was a little deceiving when we got some more snow. I yeah. mean, that's typical I honestly, Alaska. <laughs> I think I'm like a Alaska girl, like three months out of the year. Yeah. In the summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have either of you been to Alaska? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Where are you located in Alaska? Since it's so, so small. I um I grew up in Anchorage. And um, I live in Soldotna now, it's south of Anchorage, like two and a half, three hour drive. Um, and I've lived here now for about seven years. It's a really small town, so it's very different from what I grew up in. And so um, I, I really like it though. I like the small town vibes. I think yeah. that's really cool. I don't, I don't know many people that are actually like born and raised Alaskans, I guess. Yeah. So well, all- I was originally uh, born in California. Um, but we moved here when I was like four, so it's pretty much all I know. I gotta tell you, when um, all of a sudden I just started seeing your things on Instagram, your cute little videos, and I was yep. like, this girl is so <laughs> cute. <laughs> I think I saw her on TikTok. Well, no, I think I actually saw you on Instagram first, but then I started seeing these TikTok videos, and I was like, why is this girl so cute? Like, I don't like, <laughs> I don't like her at all. I'm having fun with the reels and the videos. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's uh, sparking my creativity, I guess. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. I don't have time to really figure out the reels yet, but uh, I love watching other people's. And yeah, other days. yeah. I'll it's figure a lot. It out. Very time consuming to make them. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it uh, get faster. I feel like it should get faster. Like I was trying to teach Natalie in a hotel one night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, it, it pretty much consumed our entire night. Um, yeah. yeah. I would say, I mean, the filming part, maybe not so much, but I think the editing for me has gotten faster and finding music and stuff like that. I I, I kind of like the short videos too. I try to get into the YouTube thing, but I'm so like OCD when it comes to editing and stuff like that, that it would take me hours to do a YouTube video. So yeah. I like doing the short videos. It makes the editing process go quicker. Yeah. We, and have they always been about aviation? Basically, yeah, because Reels kind of came out, I don't know, last fall, and that's kind of when I, like, was getting, like, got my license. Um, so I, I was just making, you know, a lot of, like, story videos about my journey, basically. Like, hey, I'm here today taking a lesson. Hey, I'm here today taking my exam. Um, and then it kind of, once Reels came out, I was like, how can I put, like, an aviation twist onto these, you know? Mm-hmm. So I pretty much watch Reels now just for, like, research oh. and when I see them I'm like oh I know how I can make that like about aviation so yeah so you got your license last fall yeah yep congrats thank you thank you yes it was a uh, long time. what when did you start flying when did you when did you get in, interested in aviation so um I initially took lessons in 2015 and had a series of things occur and I took some breaks. Um, and so I didn't really start flying, flying like by myself until the last two years or so. Um, and before that, I, uh, you know, as a child, I, I, I always thought that, uh, you know, pilots were like airline pilots, they were men, commercial pilots. I actually thought you had to go to like college, like many years of school to be able to fly a plane. Um, and so it just never really piqued my interest. I never really thought that that was like a career that I could do. Um, and I, uh, it's funny because my, like, basically I really wasn't into aviation at all until five years ago. Um, I actually used to like watch airplanes land and take off near my high school, some of my friends. And 
I just, I mean, I thought it was cool, but I wasn't like into it. You know, I still wasn't thinking like, oh, that's something I could do. Um, but I actually started dating a guy before my current boyfriend. And uh, he owned a super club and some other airplanes. And um, that's when I kind of got introduced to like the aviation world and normal people fly airplanes and own airplanes and things like that. So that's kind of when it started. <laughs> Um, okay. I'm glad to hear we're normal. I know. Yeah. It's like, I don't know if we're normal or not, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, but just like, no, you know, you, it's almost like I thought of a uh, pilot as like a celebrity almost. It was just like something that like wasn't unattainable for me. Yeah. You know, like small town girl living in Alaska. Like I just never mm -hmm. saw myself doing something like that. So, and I, and I even, even now I don't foresee myself like pursuing a career in it. I really like to do it as a hobby and for fun. And it's something that my boyfriend and I can do together. Um, we like exploring Alaska and stuff like that. So. So is he a pilot as well? So my current boyfriend is a pilot. Yeah. And he, uh, he got his license like two years before I did. Um, and he bought the Taylor craft that I fly now. And, uh, he learned in that plane. And then when we started dating, um, I had flown prior to that with my other boyfriend. And uh, <laughs> boyfriend number one and boyfriend number two. <laughs> yes, 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 ladies. Yeah. And so uh, once I started dating my current boyfriend, Chet, he, I mean, he really like encouraged me to finish my license and was like, use my airplane, do whatever you have to do. And he was like very supportive throughout the process. So that was very nice. <laughs> Aww, awesome. I want to know what it's like training in Alaska because honestly I live in Illinois and I did all my training in Illinois and I've now flown in Alaska I've flown in Hawaii I've flown all these cool places but I think about as a training perspective there's no way in HE double hockey sticks I would be doing like engine outs and like these maneuvers like over like I have flat land here you do not yeah. so yeah. There, is there fields <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah there's we definitely have like practice areas near the airport where there's some open fields. There's also a ton of private airstrips. You know, people mm -hmm. have airstrips in their backyards here. So it's, um, there's always that. And then in the winter, you know, the, there's, uh, we're surrounded by lakes, like tons of lakes. So you can always land on a lake or something like oh that. That's, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, Something you might not know is I, I first started flying in Las Vegas, actually. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and that, yeah, that was with my first boyfriend. Um, you know, when I started flying with him, I, I started thinking to myself, like, you know, man, I should probably, like, learn how to land the plane. You know, I, I want it to feel safer. Like, what, what if something was to happen to him? So that's kind of how it started. Um, that's when he started to, like, let me take the controls. And I remember being at lunch with him one day and being like, so how does an airplane, like, fly like do you give it gas and he just started laughing at me and started explaining like Bernoulli's principle and everything and I was like you know what I think this this is like very interesting I should uh go to ground school or you know start or do something so I bought um an online ground school through Glime mm -hmm. and uh I did all that and I, I figured out what all the requirements were and I'm really like I like books and learning and stuff like that. And so when I figured out there was like a written exam and all that, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to smoke that. And I took it. And then in my mind, I was like, well, you know, I just want to go knock out my license. Well, it's the dead of winter here. It's really mm -hmm. hard to do that. So I went to Las Vegas. I stayed there for two weeks and um, I paid like $5,000 to take lessons. I thought I was going to get my license. Wow. Like, wow. That track to finish, right? Yeah. And wow, it is like, way different flying there it's way more intimidating than it is here the really? traffic huh. yeah it's just there's so much noise on the radio and everything it was just different you know you come mm -hmm. here and, like we had a hangar we would just leave and go fly and it's like Were dead you training at like north vegas or yeah. yep. i was north at north vegas. vegas yeah north vegas is intimidating i've yeah. flown there and i'm like somebody else do the comms please <laughs> 
And, you know, I love my instructor. Like, I laugh about it now, but he was a hard ass, you know, like center, <laughs> center line, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, uh, I got super discouraged. Um, mm. I wasn't able to land. I was in a 172. Um, I, it was just too much. I was really intimidated. Um, I ended up going back home and just kind of continued to fly with my boyfriend, but I didn't pursue taking lessons or anything like that. And then we ended up breaking up and, um, he, like I said, he had, he owned multiple planes. We went to like stall comps together and all kinds of stuff he competed and so I was exposed to that life and it was really exciting and fun and it was really sad when we broke up because I kind of thought you know maybe that part of me is over now the flying thing and um just self-doubt and all that didn't help and so when I started dating Chet my current boyfriend and he really like gave me that confidence to fly again and um it was nice because I was able to finish and, and as far as training goes and stuff, like it did take me longer because of weather and mm -hmm. things like that, but I did, I got it done. So wow. maybe, maybe Alaska is where all the flying boyfriends are. I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like every man in Alaska has a pilot license because There's quite a few guys own planes here. It's yeah, it's great. It's, I mean, it's really, it really is a way of life here. Yeah. Uh, well, we, it's so far apart, right? So yeah, yeah, it's yep. the best way to get places. Yep, we really do use them for transportation and for taking supplies to like remote villages and things like that. And so yeah, yeah there's so, a ton of like, that going on here. Does your interest take you to like bush flying and like landing on small strips or in the outdoors or stole competitions or like what? What's your next? step I guess so I I joke with my boyfriend that I'm like an airport pilot <laughs> I like I really like going to the other airports and you know I just got my license so I want to fly to Homer 40 minutes away and take my girlfriends and go have lunch and you know like enjoy being a private pilot and have a fun summer and I thought about uh getting my instrument reading I actually bought the online ground school for that as well and um so I, I might go that route. And then as far as like stall comps and things like that go, I mean, I, I don't want to say I would never do it. I mean, I would definitely, you know, if I got to that level and I felt like I was capable, I, I would do it. Um, they're fun. I, I've been to numerous ones and I have friends that compete in them. And um, the Valdez stall comp, have you guys heard of that? Yeah, I was actually, I was up. I was up there and we weren't able to fly in because it was like too cloudy and nasty the day that it was going on. And um, I did get to go to Talkeetna to the Stoll Comp like fly in that they have. So. Okay. So why yeah. don't you explain what that is in case someone listening doesn't know what that is? Uh, yeah. the, Stoll the Comp. Stoll mm -hmm. Um, so I was actually listening to one of your guys' podcasts and I, I heard you guys explaining it about how you like take off and then turn around and do all that. And I mean, the ones that I've been to, you know, we, everyone lines it up and you take off and you go, but then you, you fly back around to land. So we don't like turn around or back taxi or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but all comp is like short takeoff and landing. So the airplanes are trying to take off in the shortest distance and then also land in the shortest distance. And so here we have airplanes that are like freaking helicopters. You know, yeah. if you get a good headwind going, it's like yeah. crazy what they can do. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was insane because I think that was probably the first time I had seen a stole competition with Talkeetna. And mm -hmm. people are like standing along the runway like no big deal. And I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. And you know, they're landing, short takeoff, short landings. Um, the still drags are what you kind of go, you take off, you land, you turn around, you go yeah. back. Like, okay, okay. This whole, yeah, but um, it, it's pretty intense and a lot of fun for, like, anybody to go watch. And I'm like, yeah. had I been a kid and saw, like, stole competitions, like, I would have yeah. thought, like, that was so cool. It's really cool. Just you know, knowing some of the guys that are in it and watching them like take their seats out right before and drain their fuel and they're getting all hyped up and yeah, it's really fun. And then yeah, there's always like, a fun, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just not, a really not many cool people thing. are exposed to. And it's not, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, you don't like see that part of it, you know, them preparing the airplane and getting it as light as they can and all mm. the little modifications they're making. And the guys here are just like nuts about that. Yeah, so I bet. Having- now, I've heard, like in Alaska, the weather, and you talked about getting your instrument writing. I've heard that it's really tricky to fly there um, because weather systems can like move in really quickly and, yeah. and get dangerous quick. Is that yeah. true? Oh, yeah, definitely. The weather can change on it drop of a dime like super fast I've been in a situation where we were flying home and you know it just started to snow out of control and it was just white out and fortunately we could see beneath us and we were able to land on a lake and have some friends come get us but yeah the weather changes quick here wow that's kind of scary you have all those mountains and yeah 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 I live kind of in a flatter area I think the highest is like four or five thousand feet, but it's yeah. like way off in the distance. Yeah. Um, you would have to like go towards the mountains yeah. to get to some higher gotcha. elevation where I'm at. Gotcha. Because we're right on the water where I'm at. Okay. So I'm what's your thinking. favorite favorite part about flying? I mean, what do you love about flying up there in Alaska? What um yeah, what's your favorite thing? I think flying in Alaska, especially here, I just like the freedom. Um you know, it's a little different flying here. We don't, I don't ever talk to ATC, like mm. ever, you know, so doing that um, for practice and for getting my license and all that was really fun because we just were not flying near towers all the time. Mm. Um, so I don't know, I guess just the freedom, being able to just like hop in the plane and go. Um, and it's, we live like five minutes from the airport, so it's convenient and it's just really easy to like go anywhere what is the population of like female pilots there like compared to male I mean I feel like I mean our numbers are always low but like when females see each other at the airport here we're like instantly bonded but is there there just because people are like flying around and like I actually I mean I personally don't see like any female pilots at my airport um you know I'll go into like my school and see their picture on the wall and stuff and I'm like I want to meet her (laughs) Um, but and I've made a lot of friends like on Instagram so there's a lot of female pilots that live kind of north of me Mm -hmm. um but there really isn't a ton I actually looked up some of the statistics on the FAA's website and the amount of female pilot students is just like astounding that you know and and I I was right there I mean I almost gave up too I almost quit too yeah I can see how it can be like discouraging for girls to finish Um, because yeah there was a really high percentage of student female pilots here in comparison to actual licensed pilots. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there's a way to look up student pilots um, like their names or if you just get like the statistic. Yeah I don't know. I'd be interested I'd be like really like all the students and talk to them yeah yeah and like really encourage those girls to finish that would be awesome yeah that would be cool yeah I don't know if you could find that info um but I know every once in a while I see on Instagram there's you know these a couple of female pilots that post things that are in Alaska and and I think it must I would think it'd be like even like more isolating than it is here you know we don't have many females around here but I would say it's fewer and far between, I guess, there. Yeah, I, I think so, for sure, just because we're all living in smaller towns, too. Yeah, um, yeah you know, so, like, like a lot of the friends that I've made, they live in Anchorage, a lot of the female pilots that I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's um, the biggest thing, I think, when people look at Alaska, they're like, oh, do you know pilot so-and-so from Alaska? And it's like, well, yeah. you know, they're, like, here, and I'm here. And, or <laughs> someone will ask me, like, about fishing or hunting way at the top of the map and I'm like I have never been there friend I don't know <laughs> yeah that's in Alaska you haven't seen right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't I mean I've explored mostly like south central Alaska where I live mm-hmm. um, flew pretty close to the border one time like we went up and saw Denali and stuff like that mm-hmm. um but that's pretty much it. We we don't like to cross water here. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and so to get to some of the like cooler places, you'd have to cross some pretty large bodies of water. Um, yeah. yeah. It'd be cold. Yeah. 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 So have you landed with skis on, on a plane? Yeah. yeah. Is that common? 
It was super fun. Um, I, you know, I had in the past a little bit with my boyfriend, um, but it wasn't ever like me full control. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty fun. I did that this winter, um, just taking off on some lakes around, around town here. And the snow is very forgiving. It's like landing on fluffy pillows. So it's kind of hard to mess it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Easier but, than runway. Yeah. I mean, yes and no, you definitely have to be more mindful of your surroundings. You're surrounded by trees and swamps and you, you are on a lake. So you have to look for snow burns and holes in the lakes from mm -hmm. animals and all kinds of things. So you definitely like want to do a couple passes before yeah. you land on the lake and stuff like that. And even when we land on the lake, you know, we don't just, if we have enough room, we'll continue to like give it a little bit of throttle and look behind us and just make sure that like the lake is actually frozen and you're not yeah. seeing water behind you. Cause we've had that happen where we're like, wow, that's a lot of water. We better just go. And yeah. Just take yeah. So, oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot different than flying <laughs> at the airport, I think. <laughs> But that's what I was saying. I joke with my boyfriend that I'm an airport pilot, but he wants me, he's a total like bush pilot. Like he'll yeah. land anywhere. And so he's trying to teach me that and trying to teach me how to gauge the tree lines better and yeah. try to land the shortest distance possible and stuff on the lakes and stuff just for yeah. practice. Yeah. So, Is it so, because I've read... Go ahead, well, Alyssa. Do you guys have floats? Or... Um, so my boyfriend just got a super cub and he's gonna buy floats I think this year so we don't have them yet um, I've been in like numerous float planes they're super fun I would definitely like to get my float reading yeah. I've heard when you have like a lot of snow it's kind of hard to um, uh, the depth perception is kind of hard to gauge yeah and not only that but like the flat lighting yeah um, you know, we don't, we hardly ever see the sun. It's like covered by clouds. And so it just really makes it hard to gauge the ground. Yeah. Uh, there's numerous times where I thought I was about to touch and I, you know, I either had way more room than I thought, or I came down faster than I thought. Yeah. So huh. yeah, totally different. Yeah. It's, it's definitely different. You don't really, you're not like focusing on your peripherals so much because it's just all white snow. So mm -hmm. you're not, mm -hmm. like, there's yeah, that really doesn't help that much because it all looks the same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is a little different. I felt yeah. that way a little bit with seaplanes just because yeah. when I was flying it, they told you to, when they were landing it, to find that sight picture of what it looks like, mm -hmm. of the angle of the plane, and just, you know, just bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, and just keep that sight picture. Yeah. And it, it totally made sense because you can't really gauge exactly where you know yeah yeah it's like glassy water yeah you that's know, what glassy I mean. water you would think that would be the easiest to land on but it's actually the most oh. challenging yeah mm -hmm. yeah taking off is just like it kind of like suctions mm -hmm. yeah you no know, like air yeah and so air, it's like it's air bubbles to kind of yeah. separate and get yeah same stuff. thing with the seas there's all you know if you're in super deep snow you have a ton of drag Mm -hmm. um we were gonna go to our cabin this last weekend and we had to turn around because of the wind but we landed on a couple lakes and the snow was so deep that two of us have to get out while the other one goes and just makes a bunch of tracks with the plane and wow. then we can get back in and everyone can go so it's oh yeah my gosh. yeah and even then when we when we took off I mean we came pretty close to the tree line before we got airborne we oh. were in a 180 <sighs> but um now you guys yeah I think the the float plane would be really great for you guys because you like to fish mm -hmm. yeah it'd be so fun yeah did yeah. you I love grow up fishing or like I mean my dad fished a little bit here and there in the summer but it wasn't like his life and then my ex was kind of into it but Chet is a fishing guide so it's it's his life he definitely mm -hmm. turned his passion into his career Natalie, we're going to Alaska and we're going fishing. He's a yeah. guy. All right. Yep. Natalie's <laughs> like, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, a hunting and fishing guide, and um, the areas that he flies and hunts in, uh, or hunts and fishes in, we have to fly to get to. And then also he um, fishes on the main river that kind of runs through our city here. Is that like his main job? Yeah. Yep. Okay. A lot of people do that up there. Yeah, it is a pretty common 
um, yeah. career up here. That and like the oil and gas industry is pretty big here. Um, in my town alone, we have a have lot of. Do that. Did he? Do you have any desire to do that? Be oil and gas? Nah. No. No. I work at a dental office. I've been in dentistry for uh, eight years. Okay. Um, I manage the office. I, I went to school for management. And so I just kind of fell into dentistry, but I love it. Um, uh, I work with a good group of people and it's it's fun for me. So I kind of stuck with it. Yeah. So this will be a hobby for you flying. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, it's kind of a way of life for us. We mm -hmm. have cabin that we fly to my boyfriend does it for work so it's just it's like a part of our everyday life yeah. you know it's snowing right now we're gonna have to go to the airport tonight and brush all the snow off all the planes and you know, oh wow okay have to watch the wing covers when it rains because then they get frozen and stuck to the yeah. plane like it's really like an everyday thing when the wow. plane's out there Not maintenance yeah we want a hanger yeah, <laughs> yeah. That would be valuable for you guys yeah. for sure. That's the That's goal. Cool. Yeah. So, um, one thing that I noticed when I was in Alaska is that everybody has like their preparedness kit or what are the things that you feel the need to carry in your plane or on you um, when you're flying? So we actually are required by the state to carry survival gear. Um, and it's different requirements for the summer months and the winter months. You know, in the winter months, you have to have, like, a wool blanket, snowshoes. Um, you have to have, like, a flare gun. You have to have, in the summer, you have to have fishing tackle. Um, very, like, Alaskan things to where you were to go, you know, crash like, somewhere. They check you, you or are they, are they going to, like, find you for not having any? Technically, they can, yeah. Yep. Wow. So, um, for us, we just have a little emergency survival bag that we just keep in the plane all the time. Yeah. Um, and then we always keep like a satellite phone on us. Um, we have a Garmin inReach, so you know, Chet can text me when he's out hunting and stuff, and we're not wasting satellite phone minutes. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I, I, we don't really use here, because like I said, we don't really talk to towers or anything, is. Um, I want to learn more about like floor flight and using my iPad and stuff like that. I mean, I don't, I use my GPS, that's it. And I, I fly by like, you know, line of sight. I know where everything is. It's like my town. So I don't really even need the GPS in, in a sense. Oh. Um, oh, but okay. So you use like dead reckoning and things like that piloted yep. all the time. Yep. So. Hmm, okay. Yeah, and we, we only have one highway. So if you ever get lost, you just find <laughs> you just follow the highway. Find the highway. Yeah. You can literally follow the highway to every town you want to see. Yeah. That's <laughs> it would take longer, but. <laughs> oh, my. Huh. Yeah. And then um, we just always, you know, right now in the wintertime, we always want to make sure that we have winter gear on and, um, you know, stuff to keep us warm if something was to happen. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing I've, I've thought about when in Alaska or Hawaii or flying these places that, you know, is just what what if something happened and how do you yeah. survive it and we yeah. flew out to the knick glacier and mm -hmm. we got out there and i just remember like no phone service he's like <laughs> strapped with a gun and you know he tells me about this movie that was oh filmed my God, I just don't remember the story. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny that movie is um frozen ground have you uh -huh. seen He's yeah. telling me like the plot of this movie, and I'm like, is he, I'm like, is that is that what's happening right now? <laughs> and he's like, like over in the distance, going to the men's room, and I was like, should I steal the plane? Um, <laughs> at that time, it was it was a Mall M5, so it was like high performance tail wheel. I didn't know how to fly either oh, of those things, I so I was like, okay, I can do this. Um, yeah. He does have a gun, so I don't want him to shoot me. So. That's <laughs> but so it was funny. like, it was kind of one of those moments where I was like, oh, this yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah. I, I think about like parking it somewhere and then like animals coming and like yep. tearing it up and like, how do you get it out of those remote locations? Yeah. And, yeah, that's something that we always is like a concern when we go to our cabin just because we're leaving it out there in the middle of nowhere. 
Um, so, so if we can, like, we'll have our friend drop us off. That's what we were doing this last weekend. Um, that way we just don't have to worry about it and like enjoy ourselves more. Okay. So tell me about, um, the videos, what you started doing these videos and, you know, some of them I've seen have been about your flight training or, um, just different things. What, yeah. why do you like to do those? And what, what do you, what's your hope uh, when you make these videos, what are you trying to do? I think, um, you know, it kind of just started out as a student pilot and I just kind of wanted to like share my struggles in a funny way with other student pilots and other pilots that could relate to the struggle. Of, um, you know, just with my page itself, I am trying to grow it. Um, I would like to make Girl in Alaska some type of brand one day and make a business out of it, you know, similar to like your clothing line and stuff like that. Um, I would like to have apparel and I thought about doing, you know, other online things that I can do and services that I can offer. I don't know. I've even thought about like guiding and stuff and showing people around Alaska. So yeah. I don't know. The possibilities are kind of endless right yeah. now. I think when you start out in aviation, you just do it because it's like super fun and cool and it's this yeah. new thing, but then you don't really find like what you're called to do in aviation in your yeah. first year. I mean, you start meeting people, you get experiences, you, I mean, Natalie and I met 2018 in Oshkosh yeah. mm -hmm. and, you know, I had had my license almost a year and, yeah. you know, after that point, it just kind of kept growing and now yeah. it's, my life is 100% different. So, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can't really judge where you're going. I mean, you, you have to get excited about something and kind of put your mind to like these fun projects, but yeah. I think it's fun to just see where it takes you to. Yeah. My page kind of started out, I think like everyone, you know, pictures and mm -hmm. sharing my experiences of what I was doing. And I started getting a lot of questions about Alaska, and fishing questions and flying questions and all that. And I started to see like, Mm -hmm. that there was a need for that information and help. Yeah. And so I would like to share that with people and help yeah. them. And so. I love the way you do that. I think it's cool because, um, I mean, I like it because, like, I don't understand really what the way of life is there in Alaska. Yeah. And I think that you're so, you're adorable and you do such a great job with it. And, I mean, you really, it's really interesting. People are uh, interested because you make the videos so cool and so fun and people want to watch them. And then, then like, I'm always looking forward to when you're going to do another one. It's just kind of like, <laughs> they're so entertaining and cute. And it's like, you've, you've almost found that thing, that way that you can reach people with these That's cute right. videos. Talk about aviation, Alaska, females that they're, you know, it's neat. Yeah. I've definitely been trying to find, you know, kind of hone down into like, what is my, niche niche however you say it and um you know I I feel like it's very aviation but I also love the outdoors and I love Alaska and fishing season's about to start and you know so I don't want to necessarily just like be one thing so I'm yeah. trying to kind of tie it all in together I think yeah. everything I do is Alaskan yeah, yeah. I saw, like you were hiking in one of your posts and I'm like I just need to go see her I need to go to <laughs> I'm just like, why am I not there right now? Like, I know I'm not there right now. Like, give it a couple months and I'll be there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, There's I, definitely I love a lot of, um, like, Alaska stereotypes, you know. And so I definitely just want to, like, show the world how cool it is to live here and how yeah. beautiful it is. And that it's not always snowing 24-7. And yeah. it is I'm now. But... You can do there. Yeah, there's so many things you can do in Alaska. Yeah. And there really is. Of other things and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think yeah. one of your one of your videos, you were like, um, I don't know, it's like one of the TikTok like voiceover things, and it's like, um, I don't know if you've heard this or not, but like women are supporting women. I and, love that. You know, that resonates with me so much because I'm gonna be honest, like when when I see like cute people like you doing those videos, and I'm like, oh, why? Why are they so cute? Why are they? <laughs> they're so cute and like why can you be that cute and then I'm like you know what and then I see your video of like women supporting women and I'm like she's exactly right <laughs> I must support her yeah <laughs> like and that's how I am it's like 
we're all in this together. We're supporting totally. other women. Like I yeah. love to see other women hiking and fishing and, yeah. and flying airplanes and doing cool things. And I just, I'm a little envious sometimes, but it's all I in good. Too, honestly, yeah. like, I think we all, we all compare ourselves. And even before I like met you guys, you know, I'm like, I always joke like that. I'm like a little peon pilot. I'm just like a little pilot living in Alaska and you girls are in these big cities and flying to all these cool places and flying to talk and, you know? I was born and raised in a town of 2,000 people, honey. Yeah. <laughs> I live in Illinois. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, when you said you were envious of her, uh, I, I was thinking when I see your cute videos, I'm like, I'm envious that she knows how to do these videos and I don't. <laughs> it's like, I need a class. She used to teach me how to do this. Yeah. We're going to yeah. Alaska. She's teaching us the TikTok. Yes. <laughs> and the reels. Yeah. Uh, it's it's so fun though. Like I love our group of female aviators and that everybody's so different, but also we connect on so many different levels. And I, I think that's what's so cool about it is like yeah. we're instantly bonded from for something. And yeah. Yeah. I do, I really do feel like I'm like part of this elite club you know yeah. it's it was hard like what we all went through and and we all went through it which is really mm -hmm. cool you know we all had to do the exact same thing to get that PPL you know so yeah yeah so I'm, I'm I've been training um uh, the guy that I'm dating now I'm a CFI and I just he's one of my students I have two and it's funny to hear him talk about you know I don't know if it's funny, but he's just like, yeah, I want to do that. I want to get my pilot's license. And it's kind of like, okay, well, I can teach you some things. And, but it's like, it's not that easy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Not not other than just flying the plane, you know? It, they're, it's, yeah. They're, like I said, I, I, I mean, I went to Vegas. I had already taken my written. I was like, I passed. I'm going to crush this. I get there. And I was like, wow, this is a lot harder than it was. Yeah, um, it's really different flying as a passenger and, you know, taking the controls and all that. But you don't have that responsibility, the pressure, you know, all of that other outside noise and the focus and everything. It's just it's a lot compacted into one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think you want to do the fun things and fly around. But it's kind of like you do have some book things you have to study. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, more power to you, girl, because honestly, look. Or dating somebody and I was see like I don't plan on getting my CFI maybe but I honestly I don't think I could teach somebody I was dating and I couldn't teach my family no. I'd be like no this is how you do it like yeah. you're gonna kill me <laughs> yeah exactly my, my boyfriend and I like he'll try to teach me something and then my instructor teaches it to me and it just makes like way more sense with my instructor mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> sorry honey yeah, yeah. yeah like just say okay honey thanks yeah. <laughs> did you do your flight training in the taylor craft or did you do it in something else i did yep i um did it in the taylor craft um just paid for my instructor lessons and got my own feel and all that so it really like helped save me a ton of money i think that's I awesome i think the biggest thing is that you're you know like I don't know how I would have done had I like trained in a tailwheel. Like I, I have my tailwheel endorsement, but Lord knows I am not going out and flying in a tailwheel right now. Because See, that's, it's just so crazy to me because that's like all I know. You know, right. I, I, I'm like very comfortable in a tailwheel, but I think we were all like given this crutch that we have these nose wheels and, yeah. and mm -hmm. it, it you know, you go out to fly and you're like, whoa, I forgot about that. You know? yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I love it so much. And, you know, I love the backcountry flying and short strips and grass strips and fly-ins and all of that. But honestly, like, unless I got my own tail wheel, I don't think I would be as proficient as I needed to be. Yeah. Without flying consistently. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. I got mine in a Piper Cub too, and I haven't flown, flown it, a tail wheel and almost two years probably there's like I would not go out unless someone was with me yeah you know, and yeah. fly absolutely yeah. it's cool though I wish I had more time in a tailwheel and maybe one yeah. of these days I'll have one who knows but I definitely respect the pilots that that can do that on a regular basis and when yeah. I like early like our female pilots like yourself when I see them 
I'm like, they are way better pilot than me. <laughs> I have 300 hours almost, but I'm telling you, you're probably a better pilot because I cannot do that. <laughs> it's just like, I'm realistic. And I think that's part of being a pilot is like having realistic expectations of yourself. It's too, for sure. Boundaries. Yeah. yeah. You know, I would never be like, oh, I have a tailwheel. Let me go fly that plane. Yeah, that's, I mean, even like for me right now, I just, I would never go land on a lake by myself. You know, I'm just not there yet. I, I, I don't know what I'm looking for just yet. So, yeah. yeah. So tell fun. me about, um, let's, let's listen to like, maybe tell us two stories, maybe one of one of your favorite, most memorable flights. And then one kind of your, um, uh, maybe one of your most exciting or scary flights. Okay. Um, I guess most memorable would be like my long cross country, my 150 nautical mile one. Um, where I went, I went to Seward and you have to fly through this like really big mountain pass. You're mm. flying over a lake basically the whole way. So there's like nowhere to land. Something was, you know, if the engine was to fail or anything like that. So that just alone was intimidating. Like I flown yeah. that before with my instructor, but so going through that and then coming back out, um, once I cleared the mountain range and I could kind of like see my home off in the distance, I started crying. Uh -huh. <laughs> I cried a lot. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was just like a really, really proud moment for me, you know, uh -huh. just having started this in 2015 and quitting for a couple years, not thinking I was ever going to finish. Um, I hit a major roadblock where I just could not stick my landings. I mean, I got scared when I was landing, you know, I was like, how am I going to do this without my instructor? Mm -hmm. um, but then it clicked one day and I was able to make that flight. And so that for me, you know, most memorable, I don't have a ton of flights under my belt yet by myself, but that would probably be like my favorite flight. Yeah. That's and cool. Then, what was the other one? Uh, they're most exciting or like scary. Yeah. Um, well, that one time when we had to land on the lake was pretty scary when it was like a whiteout. And then yeah. another time was kind of scary. We were trying to go to the cabin and it was a super clear day. We left very early. So the, it was still pretty dark here. It was winter. Um, and we were headed towards the mountains and the clouds just came in and we were just on like a blanket of clouds. We couldn't see an opening anywhere. Yes. Luckily we had our GPS. So we had an idea of where like the mountains were and, you know, we were able to turn around and get out of there, but it was definitely scary not having yeah. any high experience or anything oh like that. Goodness. I'd probably be terrified. I'd be like, it oh. was pretty scary, you know, looking yeah. back, like we were, we were pushing it. Like we were you're excited. We want to go to the cabin, you know, yeah. like it, it definitely, uh, this last weekend when we turned around, it reminded me of that, yeah. you know, not worth it. So. I've been in those situations and there's nothing like that feeling. And I start talking, especially like if somebody's in the cockpit with me and whether they're a pilot, like if they were a pilot, I guess they could be giving me feedback, but if it's, yeah. it's usually not a pilot, it's a friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will start like analyzing the situation, but not to scare them. I'll be like, oh, there's a hole over there. I can get through over there. Okay. And um, if I fly up here and this isn't going to work, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to go over here into that little hole that I found. And I'm going to, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, okay, I can descend, you know, just a shallow descent. There's no mountains here. So, mm -hmm. you know, like you can descend, I can get down to yeah. a even level and then be able to land, you know, mm -hmm. but it, it's so scary not having that IFR rating, even yeah. having an IFR rating. Like I'm worried about like icing and mm -hmm. that kind yeah. Of stuff. yeah, we definitely have to worry about that too. Yeah. Constant, well, you know, like, looking horror stories about people that get trapped, you know, and you're just like, I don't want to be one of those people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, you know, we, there's like this crazy mountain pass that you go through and there's just a beautiful lake on the other side, but like people have, numerous people have died going through those mountains and oh. I'm like flying through that mountain range and the guy's telling me the story and I'm like, mm-hmm, okay. <laughs> you please shut up. I'd be like, please stop I'm talking about it. it. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. You look down and you're just like, wow. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I, well, I'm sure the mountains too, you have mountain wave turbulence and stuff like that, right? When you go yeah. through them. So it's, a, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah, it, it, 
that I primarily fly in, though, I'm not near the mountains. Yeah. So. yeah. I think, I think about it too much. talking about your long cross country, I think when when we have those experiences and like we have those like emotional as women, like having those emotional breakthroughs of like, I'm doing this on my own. It's profound. And yeah. I remember getting my pilot's license, you know, I was by myself. I got my pilot's license. He shook my hand and I walked out the door and I got in my car and I just like streamed crying, you know, and I didn't even know who to call. I mean, I had a boyfriend I have family, like, but I'm just like, nobody really understands. Right. Yeah. But it's like, and I didn't know any pilots. The The only pilots I knew were the guy that first took me up flying my instructor and another guy. Mm-hmm. And so I called my friend and said, hey, I got my pilot's license today. Like, you know, just because they know. And I think, I think, you know, I'm, I'm like picturing you like crying and I'm like, I'm tearing up because yeah. thinking about <laughs> like, I know those days of like, or I had a really bad week and I got to go fly solo and you know, you just, the emotion hits you that like, yeah, you're doing this and you're proud of yourself. And Mm -hmm. I can relate it to like in high school and things you, you're growing up and you know, you play sports and everything. And that's like your gauge of how you're doing in life. Mm -hmm. But then as an adult, you don't really have those like okay, you're momming and you're, you have a boyfriend or a husband and like, you don't hate them. Okay, cool. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like, <laughs> like, what do you do to make yourself proud or like gain right. and or to challenge yourself yeah, or challenge yourself right. and like, years, yeah, hard. like hard. I think mm-hmm. that was getting my pilot's license was the single most like proud moment I've ever been for yeah. myself. I, that I was, more proud than when I graduated from college like Mm -hmm. I it was just it was harder you know yeah um I I was like so excited I didn't cry I just couldn't stop smiling the whole rest of the day I was just giddy you know oh my gosh I did this you know I did this no one did it for me yeah I did it you know I remember going to a birthday party for my cousin's like 30th birthday and I told people and like, I wanted them to, like, announce it and, like, be like, congratulations, <laughs> she's a pilot. And, like, did anything. Yeah, I, lived, it was like, I lived, like, such a small town. I had, like, people lining up at the airport watching me. Come. My boyfriend was there to give me a hug, you know. Like, it was, I, I didn't cry either then. But, um, and then I, I've been here for eight years at this office. So, I know all my patients. I have, my boss is a pilot. I have numerous pilot patients. So, for the last, like, the whole time I was, uh, you know, getting my license, it was always, hey, did you get your license yet? Hey, did you get your license yet? Oh, How'd gosh. your license go? How's it going? And it was starting to get annoying. Yeah. <laughs> so once I finally did get it and they asked, I was like, I got it. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Uh, so. I remember I didn't tell anyone I was working on it for, for a while because I didn't want people asking me all the time and adding that extra pressure. Yeah. It was like, it, it took me a while to actually tell people, oh, by the way, I started flight training like a month ago. <laughs> well, I was, I was telling people all the time, but like nobody understood what I was doing. Right. And so it, it didn't resonate and I didn't know any pilots. So I didn't know like who, how to talk to people about it or who to talk to. And that's why I try to like really like help anybody that I can, because I, I mean, I, I didn't know anyone and yeah. I just remember like, the my first solo I had called my mom that that morning I didn't know I was gonna solo and I was like oh you going to work like what's up you know just like catching up with my mom I soloed and I called my mom when I was done and she's like oh is that why you called me so like if something happened to you that you had called me before and I'm like no mom I didn't know I was even soloing that day (laughs) yeah they don't tell you so I couldn't call I couldn't call her before flight lessons so she didn't know when I was flying yeah but yeah it was a yeah. weird experience not having like that support and yeah. so I think that's a big part of why I love to help people during their training just even emotionally through Instagram and you know it's I, I've came I've made a lot of friends just through social media and ended up meeting them or whatnot just because mm-hmm. we've connected yeah. that way so yeah yeah highly it. 
Totally. Well, okay. Um, anything else you want to share about aviation or, or your TikTok videos? <laughs> no, I, not that I can think of. Tell everybody where to find you. Who like How do they find you on TikTok and Instagram and, and all that? So all of my handles are the same. It's girl.in.alaska, girl in Alaska. Um, and I'm on Instagram. I think I have a YouTube page that I don't post to very often. And it's and it's look at mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, those are Instagram is my main focus. Mm -hmm. um, that's the one that I'm trying to grow and mm -hmm. uh, share everything on. So very cool. So if I come to Alaska, will I get to go flying with you? Yes, that would be so fun. Yes, that would be fun. Let's go, Alyssa. Yeah. Let's I'm down. I will quit my jobs right now and we're going to Alaska. I'm going to be a fish pilot. Yes. <laughs> You're going to come slay some salmon. Yeah. I've never, I've never went salmon fishing um, and, or sea fishing. Like I've never been like deep sea fishing or anything. So those are yeah. things like I love fly fishing. I love those, but yeah. Well, if you like fly fishing, I'm sure you'd love it. Yeah. I'm so excited. Natalie is going to catch a fish. It's going to be great. Yes. We'll, we'll put you <laughs> I on the fish. fish a lot, actually, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, when I, where I grew up, we had um, a pond and we stocked it with fish. So I would, I would fish. It's been a while. I can't say that I, I'm, I'm like desperate to get my hands on the, the bait and all that stuff again, but if someone could bake the hook for me, I'd be like, down for that. So yeah. <laughs> we'll bring the guide. Yes. Yeah. Chet will do it. Yeah. That's why we bring them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I do hear people doing trips. I actually know a couple of people that have flown to Alaska from, from here. And, um, well, not, I mean, necessarily right here, but the continental U S and I think it'd be such a cool experience to do that. I, I don't know if I'd ever do it, but um i think it'd be neat to do yeah i i would love to fly a plane to the states one day and yeah. cruise around there and check stuff out yeah so you're yeah, very welcome well to fly commercially here and then come flying with us okay <laughs> yeah anytime <laughs> well thank okay. you so much yes thank you for having me yeah and definitely get over and check out all her stuff online she's super sweet and cute and all the things um <laughs> This is Cockpits and Cocktails with Fly, oh, Fly Alyssa. <laughs> it's okay. Edit. Cut. <laughs> we do. This is Fly Alyssa. This is Cockpits and Cocktails. Thank you guys so much. Have a great night. And make sure to check our Instagram posts to see the winners for our giveaways. Make sure you listen to all of the episodes and you will be entered to win. That's right. We that's kind of new this season. We have lots of cool, cool giveaways that we're going to be doing. So, but you have to listen to the episodes so that you can answer the questions and, and win all. The <laughs> <laughs> all right, ladies. Good night. Bye. Cheers. Bye, guys. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers with my tea. <laughs>